Today we're here with Colin. Colin has been married for 10 years. He's been with his uh, wife coming up to 18 years. His wife has a boyfriend for almost five years, and Colin has a girlfriend for a little over a year now. Colin? Hello. How are yeah, you doing this evening? Uh, this is our version of polyamory. That's what we're going to get into, and uh, I'm excited to answer all the fun questions and the curiosity and all that comes with it. What is polyamory? Uh, well, polyamory is a lot, well, there's no real definitive answer of polyamory. Uh, every version of polyamory is kind of different, but it's basis of believing, of having the ability to love more than one person without it taking away from another. Uh, a lot of people are monogamous, and it's been that way for the longest time, but as statistics show, divorce rates being higher, everything going higher, the human nature is not meant to be monogamous. We're just not maybe in the 1900s, 1800s, when life expectancy was considerably shorter. It was very feasible to spend your whole life with somebody when you were talking 10, 15 years. Now, it is still possible. Uh, I've been married for 10 years, been with her for 18 years. We've been through thick, thin, hell, and heaven in the whole nine yards. Uh, just like any relationship, it's just a lot of work and how much you want to... Uh, invest into that and how much you want to own but polyamory is the ability to love more than one person without it affecting uh the other so my question for you colin is thank you for being here by the way i appreciate yeah. you no, no. um how did that start i gotta know how it started from the so beginning from the beginning so you get you married your wife mm -hmm. or you're dating your wife you get married where does that conversation start where you decide okay uh, we're doing this. <laughs> well, um, infidelity, basically. Uh, how we got into our first thing is I was able to persuade my girlfriend at the time to bring another woman into a relationship. Uh, I royally shit the bed with that. You smooth talker, you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, I fixated too much on the other person and not on the situation itself like I royally... Uh, shit the bed on that aspect, but that was the beginning of it. Uh, I want to say we were 20. She was pregnant at the time with my oldest daughter. Uh, hormones and all that other stuff kind of took into effect, so it wasn't all on me. Uh, but that was our first dabble on it, and it was very, very rocky. Um, I fixated too much on the other person because I was young and dumb and full of cum and all that other jazz <laughs> <laughs> and uh it made us confront some awkward uneasy conversations but we sat down and we started talking about it which ultimately led into uh couple swapping is what we ended up getting into me and cheryl would meet up with another couple and we would have a handful of conversations sober set the basis sound the ground rules and then go into the weekend and just whatever happened kind of happened, but we would have the sober conversation prior to make sure all parties involved were knowing, willing, and okay with everything. And then if that all went smoothly, then we would just kind of go out, have our drinks, go do our movies, whatever, and just kind of let everything naturally uh, come to fruition, um, which ultimately evolved into where we are now because inevitably when you do – a couple swap like that, there's always one person that is not getting everything they want for the benefit of everyone else. Um, it's, it's actually a lot like being monogamous in an aspect. When you uh, start dating somebody, they fulfill X amount of your boxes, but it's impossible for one person to fill all of your boxes. But you make that sacrifice of missing one or two for the remainders being fulfilled and, and all that other stuff. So that's what we were doing. We were doing couple swaps, but then we realized that it would just be easier if we decided to try our own thing, uh, polyamory with the consensus and understanding of everyone's feelings and full honesty and all that jazz. So how, how similar or different is couple swapping that's the term you used and swinging uh are they drastically so i was actually anticipating this 
question because we get it a lot. Uh, a lot of people think me and Cheryl, my wife, are swingers. Um, where it's kind of like calling the pot black, you know, the kettle and all that jazz, because it is very similar in actions, but the basis behind it is completely different. When you go into a swinging event or you are swingers, you go to a uh, event, a hotel, a meetup, whatever, with like-minded individuals, and once you enter the door, it's, depending on how the party is set up, it's all already there. Um, you don't have to ask permission. You don't have to do any of that. You just go. And then at the end of it, you go home to your life, your kids, your work, your whole nine yards. And uh, that is basically what swinging is, uh, where polyamory for us is individual relationships with the only overlap being on a social basis. A lot like the Olympic rings, everybody's pretty familiar with the Olympic rings. So each relationship is its own entity with the only overlap on a social basis. Um, a lot of people assume that we do everything together. We don't. Jealousy is still very real. Uh, feelings are still very much involved with polyamory. Um, so instead of basically picking a fight, doing everything in a room, we keep it all separate. So that way, my relationship with my girlfriend, Savannah, is my relationship, and my relationship with Cheryl is mine, and her relationship with Ross is hers. But we all coexist and co-mingle on a social basis. I mean, you've seen us in your bar all the time. Um, it's very important that we can be social and can get along because it's a lot like a, a Rolex or a timepiece. If one part of that assembly is broken, it'll crumble the whole assembly and right. cause more issues down the road. Right, absolutely. It's crazy. You mentioned that it's you're doing these things or you're swinging, and then you go back to your life. In your case and in your relationships, it is your life. It's yeah. It's all connected and it's still part of your life. Much yeah. more commitment there. Yeah, my, uh, our kids are fully aware of it. There's no secrets there. Um, they know all of our partners. We are very forward and blunt about everything and are very respectful around the kids. Obviously, we keep our PDA to a minimal in front of the kids because they don't need to see that. It, it's just like a regular relationship. You wouldn't go home and get involved with your girlfriend in front of your kids. It's just not appropriate like that, but they... They know they're a part of our lives, and uh, they're just as much involved in our kids' lives as we are. I have a question. So we know the beginnings of how this stuff, and I'm not coming to a conclusion, but this is just a random question I had. Like, They've been with each other almost five years. Yeah. You've been with her a little over a year. Where do you see the next five years, the next ten years? So for us in our situation um, – there's four ground rules we don't break. Uh, I can't marry. I can't have kids. We can't live together. And I can't pay mm. your bills. Okay. So with those four definitives, everything else is on the table. There is no set time limit. There's no set finish line. Um, it's a willing, knowing entrance into this, lack of better purposes, arrangement. And uh, all the other people, Ross and Savannah, are both aware that the end game, if they wanted marriage and kids, is not here. Uh, I know Cheryl's boyfriend, he actually, funny enough, he's getting Sancho tattooed across his stomach. <laughs> he's very, he, he plays that card to the T. He's one of my good friends, but that's always been his cup of tea he's always been the side guy he's never wanted to be the main he doesn't want kids he doesn't want to get married he doesn't want to do any of that stuff he did in the past but he had his own uh situations there that shaped him to be where he is now uh he is actually uh a union diesel repairman in vegas and he works more hours than i do uh he Runs basically the same schedule, has four days off a month, does 10 to 12-hour shifts, and uh, he, he just doesn't have the time for a full-fledged relationship, so this works very well for him. Uh, on my end, with Savannah, she she doesn't want kids either. 
she was engaged once before is not something she's interested in and not something she's currently looking for, but she is aware that that is still a very valid option for her. And if she wanted that, I am not going to step in her way and stop her from doing that. I actually do persuade her to uh, pursue her feelings and pursue other options because that is kind of my job is to, to give full completion and give her everything I can and help her ascend to the next level, not to restrain or hold her back. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to ask you if they're free to have their own relationships and if that is that any are there any limitations on that or she's no, she's open sure, were you gonna say question. that too yeah, yeah. I'm glad she's, you asked. she's open to have her own is she, can she go out tomorrow and find somebody in there like okay we're gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend and still be with you or is that kind of a you're with me and if you want to do something else that's fine but then we're done no um it's not quite that cut and dry uh but it is uh, there is a couple of conversations that have to be had because it's not just me involved if she decides to date somebody else uh, because obviously we're all adults here. Sex is definitely a part of a relationship. It is not what we base our whole relationship on, but consenting adults obviously have sex. So if she wanted to have another partner, regardless if it's a guy or a girl, whoever, before they would get intimate, before they took that step, we would all have to have a conversation and make sure everybody involved is okay. Even though our relationships are separated uh, on a social basis, the interactions behind closed doors, if you will, do and would waterfall down through all of Absolutely. us. Yeah. So safety is uh, a very big part of us. Uh, you know, we all do STD checks and make sure cleanliness is next to godliness, the whole nine yards, because we're not trying to make anyone else's life worse over this. But as far as the relationship goes, she would just have to say, hey, I am interested in A, uh, I would like to see how things go. And uh, how is your feelings about this? And I would just basically go, yep, that's fine. I will limit my time with you. Uh, as your relationship progresses, if you guys start to get intimate, please let me know. Then uh, protection has to come in and cross all that. Cross that bridge. Yeah, and then, there, yeah. then we thing. basically cross that as it comes. But there's no, you're with him and you can't be with me. There's nothing like that because it's, we don't control like that uh yeah. you know free will is is totally there but we want to make sure that all parties involved are still safe and right taken right, right. care of absolutely uh so i wanted to talk about i'm assuming you know tons about ross i i'm assuming that all four of you guys know a lot about each other probably more than we should right so without getting into too much detail because it's just i'm curious about it uh childhood trauma out of the four of you is there childhood trauma? I mean, that's... If you show me a child that has been raised without trauma, I would be tremendously surprised. I think all of us being of a certain age, especially being raised in the 90s and 2000s, you know, trauma was there. We Let me, let me define that better than child abuse. Oh, child in some, abuse. In some form of sexual or physical domestic violence, that's what I'm asking. No, I, I wouldn't say that. That doesn't take place in ours. That isn't a definitive there. Um, I can't speak for Ross because we haven't got that close. I know we had a, an estranged relationship, but I don't believe it was an intimate-based estranged. Uh, but I know I haven't, Cheryl hasn't, and to the best of my knowledge, Savannah hasn't either. Um, we've all just kind of came to the understanding that we had the ability to love more than just one person. Like the best way I can put this is, uh, what, what's your favorite type of cheese? All of them. Provolone for me. Okay. Oh, I'm a provolone guy. Okay. And pick one. What is your absolute favorite? Gouda, cheddar. Gouda is very Gouda. Yeah. If you only I have one more cheese, ch you have to. Let's not spend too much time on this because okay. I can't. Right. I uh, okay. probably cheddar, you, cheddar, but, is that your only favorite cheese? No, it's not my only favorite okay. cheese. Okay, say you, you like pepper jack. Does I your like love pepper of jack pepper too. jack take away from your love of provolone? 
Uh, <laughs> damn, that's good. No, it does not. So that's basically what. That's a good analogy. What polyamory is. There's, I mean, I, I think as today's day and age has become a lot more common, you know, and I think like me personally, of course, I like more than one woman at a time. I feel like as me as a man, like that, that's just that's me. You know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's some people that want to be committed to one person. Yeah. And then there's some people that are attracted to many people at once. And if they're single, I, I just don't think there's anything wrong with that. And no. I think a lot of people think your relationship is taboo because a lot of people are brought up to believe that there's right. one person, yeah. Yeah. the one, the soulmate. But, you yeah, know, if I, it was if it was up to me, I don't I don't know if I would be polyamorous because I'm a jealous person. You know, I couldn't take my lover being with someone else. But so. The jealousy doesn't go away, but a jealousy feeling is a chemical reaction to lack of something. So when you are out and about and your significant other, your partner is doing something that makes you feel jealous, there's a reason that is happening. You're not getting something that you want to be getting or you used to be getting that you're no longer getting. That's why you have that first knee-jerk reaction, which causes the waterfall of emotions and chemicals and everything else to go. And and jealousy does not go away just because I have a wife and a girlfriend. It, it is worse because now it's just not me. Because if I'm spending too much time with Savannah, mm-hmm. Cheryl can get jealous, and then her jealousy can come into my relationship and vice versa if I'm spending too much time with Cheryl and not enough time. It is very intricate, and it is a shit ton of work uh the level of communication has to be 10 times what your normal is if you wake up one day and you go you know what screw it i don't want to do anything i'm just going to shut my phone off i'm going to sit on the couch eat cereal watch cartoons all day or whatever your your niche is when you're dating one person okay you have to explain yourself but when you're dating multiple people you get you don't stop getting the ridicule so the communication aspect for us is astronomically high so you could probably say that your the communication is really what makes this whole thing even work 1000 percent communication is key and more so on that you have to be completely blunt upfront, and honest with everything there is no secrets i got something for you colin if you can do this let's say that god forbid something happened to you and your wife and that this no longer worked would you be pursuing something like this again or would you just go with a okay i'm just gonna date one person (laughs) i don't know what we're (laughs) um no you know that that's logical uh in my line of work i run a uh, a tow truck here in town i'm one of the senior drivers uh my profession isn't super dangerous uh there's always a chance i won't come home for work so that is actually one of the conversations we do have uh especially in my line of work and his line of work being a diesel tech out in the field working on equipment shit happens in in the blink of an eye so me personally i don't know how soon i would step into another relationship but this journey for me for the last we've been public for four years private for well more than four years public almost five now uh in private eight or nine years of doing this it's such a freeing experience and to be able to sit down with your partner and go damn she's kind of cute and she go, oh, go talk to her. And then being able to just be yourself and be honest and not have to worry about saying the wrong thing or crossing a boundary or doing something like that. I don't think I could ever go back to monogamy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not, not for me anymore now that I've been able to comfortably come to the realization and accept the terms and be forthcoming and honest with all of my emotions and feelings. It's not something I would want to be restricted again. Yeah. I think it's crazy how in your relationship specifically, um, because I feel like that's really all you can speak to at this point, because even your your relationship is different than another couple who has their own a- absolutely there's no set rules there's no okay no these, they're really this is how it works that's not a thing which is crazy but in your relationship specifically how far does your wife cheryl's say go how 
if she says, no, you're not seeing her today, do you say, okay? Yeah. Or is it like a, hey, well, wait a minute. A hundred percent. If or... she has a justified reason behind it, 100%. So that is the check and balance. She goes, hey, I don't want you to go do this. And I say, okay, well, why? And I can ask that question without her going, well, fuck you. I said so. Because I say right, so. That's right. why. You know, but that that's... <laughs> right. That's the check in the balance. The so I can go, though. well, why do you feel this way? Why don't you want me to go do whatever? And she goes, well, because we have this, 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 and this. If it's a valid reason, okay, 100%. I got you, no problem. But if it's, well, I don't feel like it. Well, why don't you feel like it? And then we dive into the conversations more and go, uh, okay, so obviously I need to do this. So if I do this today... You know, and we'll check our schedules and go, okay, in two two weeks, three weeks, whenever my next available time is, all right, I will then go do this because that's that's the communication. And uh, Savannah is the longest girl I've been dating. I've had absolutely horrendous luck in <laughs> this town. The dating pool here yeah. is fucking wild. I hope I can cuss on here. Well, um, of course you can. Absolutely. I've noticed being polyamorous and being married and looking for a partner 90 percent of the female people i match or came across were totally okay being behind the curtain but as soon as they knew that my other half was willing and fully aware of the situation they no longer wanted oh anything to do with God. it what See, I, I, I kind of get that because it maybe in their mind it's like what if he's lying maybe she's not really cool with this and women know how catty other women can get. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I, I could see that, you know, once you tell them, hey, my wife's cool with this. So like, typically it would be like the third date and I would have my wife come out and meet us. So that way, because like there's a lot of shitty men out there. There's a lot of fucking dirtbag For guys sure. out there that will say whatever they want to say to get whatever they want. So I... I'm used to that. Oh, and you're women, lying. They don't yeah, you're lying. You're lying. You're oh, it's across the board. Men yeah. and women both. They both play the same games, a hundred percent. And that is actually modern society and instant gratification on social media. And that's a whole nother ball game there. But I would have her come out and here's Ex my wife. Really? Yeah. Ask that's her cool. how whatever, however, whatever. Yeah. Ask her. And uh, even today, like, while I've been here, I've had both of my partners text me, and they have their own group texts, and they talk, and they go do dates, and uh, platonic, obviously not intimate, but they'll go do uh, many petties, go see a movie, go get lunch. Like, they have a friendship as well, so it's very important for our version of polyamory for everybody to get along. Um, the basis is pretty much the same across the board, but there is a shit ton of uh, pages and forums dedicated to polyamory on sure. Reddit, Google, uh, TikTok. There's a handful of good creators on TikTok that answer these questions as well from different point of views, different uh, standpoints. You know, polyamory isn't just, you know, men and women. It's, it's women and women. Uh, the most common one you run across is the triads where you'll have a married couple that has a live-in girlfriend. They call them unicorns. Those are the most common version of polyamory where one girl dates not only the wife but the husband and they live together. That is one of the more common aspects of it. Um, Let me ask you this. Do you have any advice that you would give like a newly polyamorous couple um, from your experience of doing this for so long? Uh, be completely blunt and forward and honest and upfront and make sure you have the adequate time to sit down with your own demons and have your own court because yeah. polyamory will not fix a broken relationship. If your relationship is already has a rocky foundation, throwing 10 pounds of gasoline and dropping a match is not going to help anything. <coughs> My, my question was, you said you've been public close to five years. <coughs> what was the backlash like when you guys came public? Uh, I, I'm still dealing with it. I, uh, a lot of people think we're swingers. We get gossiped a lot about. Um, I was a part of a car club for the last 12 years, and uh, they do a yearly cruise. We get on a carnival boat. We go to uh, Ensenada, Bahamas, 
wherever, and we get the whole car club there, and you just basically get shit house, and we all have dinner, get dressed, all that. Well, this year the theme was pineapples, which is unanimous with swingers, so it was a swinger themed cruise. I opted not to get on that boat. Not that I did not want to see these people I care about, but we're already <laughs> painted as swingers. Everybody has the conception that we all just cuddle puddle and fucking one bed and everything is you know swapping around and we we don't do any of that but that is the most common thing we get when we're walking around in public um and all that other stuff like today is a prime example uh this is my sunday i spent the last two days with savannah and we went to rusty's today for lunch and the wait staff is in there and she instantly came up where's your wife who is this I'm like, yeah, this is Savannah, my girlfriend. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to sit and, you know, m explain everything to you. This is just the surreality of it. So a lot of people are, are shocked of it. Um, even my own family. I am Catholic, uh, which is funny. I was baptized. I went through the whole nine yards. Um, and my family is... Texas Catholics, and if you know anything about Texas and religion, it is huge. They don't mm. understand it. I am definitely uh, the black sheep and a walking blasphemy. But That's crazy. It's really interesting that you brought that up. I was going to ask you about that, and I think that speaks a lot of the, as far as religion and monogamy goes, they're hand in hand in a lot of ways and in Ooh. a lot of different religions. They, they go together, so I was going to ask you if, if you Depending or on how if you anybody depict the Bible, else if you are if you guys were religious or not. Uh, That's interesting. I am. I don't really practice it much anymore. Uh, I'm a firm believer I can pray wherever I need to be. If I find myself in that position, I don't think I need to go to a set house to yeah. communicate. Um, right. I know Cheryl is 100% Native American, and that is its own spiritual beliefs. Ross, we don't really talk about that neither do i do with savannah religion we kind of stay away from a lot like politics because mm -hmm. it's a real touchy fiery topic but uh depending on how you depict the bible or whatever your form of religion is monogamy is just as much of a play as polyamory because they talk about you know cheating and stoning and yada yada you know we won't get into all that but so long as you're honest and forward with your communication is basis of most of that and committing yourself to somebody fully, and that's what we do with polyamory. I, when I am with you, I commit myself to you until something changes and you are fully aware of my other partner and everything else. So there is no secrets. Everything is very cut and dry. Everything's on the table. Has it always been like that from the beginning? Like, was there a, a beginning stage of like maybe one of the, you know, one of you guys was maybe doing something that you weren't supposed to or breaking the rules in the beginning. And then, you know, did you have to deal with any of that stuff? Did you ever have rule breaking and no, you had to I'm actually naughty. address this? Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, I, uh, I have two daughters with my wife, uh, but I have three kids all together. I, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll get okay. into this. Yeah. No, no, uh. <laughs> me and my wife, we got in an argument, and my boys at the time thought it'd be good to take me out to the bars, get my mind off of it. Uh, I remember my second Irish car bomb that I slammed because I didn't know any better, and you don't slam Irish car bombs. Um, and then I woke up on his couch, didn't remember any of the night. Well, five years later, I was served at a rifle point. Uh, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, and I was one of 11 guys on the docket, apparently, and I drew the short stick, 100%, I drew the short stick. Apparently, <laughs> somewhere in that night, I uh, found and hooked up with a coach at girl at one of the bars in my hometown. No regulation of it, but I mean, obviously, I had a kid out there, and DNA tests and court documents and everything proved that, but... Um, Infidelity is actually what led us to polyamory. That's why we ended up having our first threesome and uh, how it went to be because we decided instead of lying about our emotions and lying about our lusts and our feelings, we would just come to church with them for lack of a better purpose. Mm -hmm. 
you know, to, to put on the religion nose there, uh, <laughs> and just be honest and forward about it. And that's actually how we ended up starting with couple swaps. As there was a, a couple of couples I was attracted to, uh, and then a couple of couples she was attracted to, so we would just pursue things. But ultimately, we decided just to fully step into the polyamory and go that route because it was just a better fit for us. I think it would take so much more communication to have, like, the couple swapping with different couples all the time. Like, that's a lot of texting and, it, it and was. fixing schedules and shit like that, I would think, you know. Polyamory is, is definitely easier mm-hmm. in that aspect uh, as far as meeting, but the level of communication is ten times more. So... Uh, Think if you had a significant other. I don't know your guys. I know Caitlin has uh, another half. I don't know you guys well enough to to know that for sure. But how often you have to communicate with the other half throughout work? You do 100, 200 text messages a day, triple it. And then you have the level of communication I have to have with both of my partners to make sure that everybody's okay. Like I said, I'm spending my weekend with Savannah right now, but I've still gone home to make sure the kids are fed, help them out wherever, because my wife is working two jobs. Um, she works at home for one and then works uh, part-time at a local store here in town just to help pay off some more debt because we bought a house last year and bought a new truck, and we're just trying to hammer out some things while we can. But any which way... Uh, the level of communication has to be higher, so that way I can make sure she's okay, the kids are okay, all of my pets are okay, and and still very much keeping communication with everybody because it's like a watch. Everything has to move or else it'll fall apart. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So it's absolutely a lot of work. My, yeah, it's a ton of work, dude. I mean, if you if you can't handle just being in a rela- regular relationship, then polyamorous is definitely not for you because you're just tripling everything or quadrupling everything. Mm-hmm. My, yeah. my next um, question is this, just so I understand. You're saying you're spending the weekend with your girlfriend, and they your girlfriend is not allowed to live with you guys. So do you stay with her on her time, and then vice versa, your wife stays with you, and then you stay home? Or how does that – how do you guys share that? Well, that is uh, pretty simple, actually. She has an apartment here in town that I'm cool. staying at yeah. right now. Uh, Cheryl's boyfriend li- resides in Vegas, so she typically will go out and see him in Vegas and spend the weekend with him in Vegas, and typically that's when I'll have my weekend with Savannah as well, so that way she'll come over, hang out at my house mm-hmm. while Cheryl's out, two birds, one stone. That way we get time, she gets time, and everything kind of coexists because mm-hmm. we do have kids. We do both work full-time jobs. We have pets and everything else. So it is very, very fluid and very uh, fast and loose. Everything uh, can change at a blink of an eye. If something happens, that's why I have my phone next to me. If my kids need me because I can jam home, I can handle it. No matter where I am, we're always willing to drop and and go home. But typically, that's just what it is. is, I would text Cheryl and be like, hey, my Tuesday, Wednesday – off I'd like to spend with Savannah is that okay and she'll go yeah but I have this this and this and this okay I can handle those you know let me know if you need anything else and then I go and do my thing and I keep her updated and I do what she needs to get done and vice versa she typically goes out to Vegas because he works heavy construction for a union so that works better for her because she can go out he can go work four hours on Saturday four to ten hours he works early morning shifts at like 4 a.m. It's Still ridiculous, but yeah, he can come day. home and then yeah. they'll go out and eat lunch, go dinner, do whatever. Um, and that's what we try to do is make ourselves as available as much as we can to help the other person's schedule. Cause that's what it honestly is, is being able to bend and twist as needed. Flexible. Yeah. Is what that a so? hell of teamwork. I mean, yeah. all, all I'm hearing right now is just the most incredible teamwork. <laughs> it's, a lot of, I mean? it's a lot of working parts it, to it. It is. You know? it, it is a lot of working parts. Obviously, I think more men would like to be polyamorous because, you know, with two females, like having a unicorn, I think, you know. Um, and I think they could get that. But the problem is people are not honest and upfront. I have a friend that has a wife, you know, and he has girlfriends out here from time to time. And sh- the wife doesn't want to know about it. She's good with it, but he's always up front with his girlfriends out here. 
you know? So I think as long as you're honest and that person has that trust in you and they feel like you're not going to lie to them and just be totally upfront, like you said, be blunt with them, I think a lot more men can get unicorns. Well, isn't it so interesting that the, like you're saying that you're communicating with both these women. I think it's a scientific fact that women talk more and have more to say than men. So poor Colin's over here. And I'm not saying anyone's, <laughs> it's not, no dig at anybody else, but poor Colin's over here <laughs> dealing with two women. I'm sure you're dealing with way more communication and way more text messages and phone calls and stuff than, than Cheryl's dealing with, with two men. And you know, I, I just to interject on that real quick, I, I kind of agree with her because I think women do communicate more, but men communicate more effectively. Yes. Yes, I yeah. agree. Uh, well, no, you're not wrong. I uh, Like I said, I run a tow truck in town, so I check text because that's how we have to while operating commercial equipment. We can't be like, pull over on the side of the road. So I, I text a lot. Uh, it's just part of my nature. But, yeah, no, it, it's a lot of texting. It's a lot of communication. And that's where I said there's a lot of guys out there that are like, yeah, I want two women. Hell yeah. And they want to, you know, bird chest and, and showboat. And that's not what this is. Yeah. Uh, it, it could be, but fuck that headache. Yeah. 120% fuck that headache. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's so much work for 30, 40 minutes of behind doors time. Like, I, I couldn't imagine yeah, doing that. Yeah, and you're that. not doing this with just, oh, you're cute, I'll talk to you for 24 right. hours. If you're going to commit to this and you're going to make this a part of your life, it's somebody that you're genuinely interested in and somebody that you that brings stuff something to your life because you're right. not going to be dealing with all this and doing no, and all this extra effort for well that's been my experience here anything. in town it's it's been real hard for me to find anybody most of my relationships would last anywhere from four weeks to six months and then they would just get tired of it they they wouldn't want to do it because they realize it's too much work and it's not the fling they thought it was it wasn't just the pump and dump and move on it it was an actual operation and it yeah. took time and um there's yeah there's a lot of shit. yeah kudos to you guys for putting in the effort and the time and all the moving parts that goes in and really we could say colin probably has the most when it comes to commitment i mean think about yeah, his levels of commitment on this i, I have to i, I mean it's to, fucking 100%. insane you know what i mean you're committing yourself to two women right and everything that goes into the communication and all that stuff, you know, I think it's probably easier for most guys to cheat or to have something on the side. You don't have to commit and you don't have to communicate with all that stuff, you know what I mean? But to have something like this actual work, actually work, that's fucking, that's a big deal. No, you know what I mean? it is. And that's one of the things I just actually did is uh, for Cheryl's five-year anniversary, I uh, booked plane tickets and hotels and... All that, the only thing they're responsible for is the rental car and whatever they're going to eat and drink. And I'm sending both Cheryl and Ross to one of the biggest mini truck shows on the East Coast. And you um, gifted that to them? Yeah, as an anniversary <laughs> gift. <laughs> Are you kidding? Because uh, it, it's just as important. That's fucking like, awesome. If I want my cake and my ice cream, they got to have theirs. And if I would like to take Savannah out on a date sometime across the country, whatever, I got to be willing to do the same. And... Uh, it was a big learning curve. Stepping into this was a learning curve for me. I shit the bed, and I have grown a lot in the last five years, and Ross has been a very patient man because I was not always the best with my emotions, and I'm still growing and still learning now. It, it's very much a learning curve, and uh, tempers and emotions and everything are still valid. Just because you want to open yourself up, there's no light switch for that. It's right. You can't just shut that shit off. And uh, this is my way of repaying and showing my appreciation and making sure they get the time that they desperately need. Uh, because he works for the union, he's about to get laid off. He keeps getting his job extended, which is good for him. But being a union guy, there is no next job. You, your name goes back into a bucket, and then you got a call, and you got a call, and you got a call until someone goes, Oh, yep, your turn. So for him, money, he makes a lot, but doesn't mean he's going to always make a lot. So this way I was like, hey, look, I know you're about to get laid off. I know 
you know, you're going to be furloughed. Well, you don't know when guy. your next job is going to be. Go. Go I get speaks, get the hell away. and. Yeah, I think it speaks huge to your love for Cheryl, too. And you're clearly you love her. You've been with her for, ten, yeah. for X amount of right. years. But it speaks to your love for her and the fact that, hey, Ross is important to her and brings her brings things to her life and you and your appreciation for that hey you're you're also loving the woman that i love it, it, correct me if that's wrong but i yeah. think that's really special it's like the most extreme extreme case of happy wife happy life right it, it, it no really kidding. is but um so in the beginning i said that you know when you date somebody monogamously you have a, a 10 point checklist right and the person you find will meet five, six, hopefully more than five. Hopefully you don't settle for, you know, only three of your checklists because, shit, you need to go back out and keep searching. Right. But, you know, seven or so of your checklist. So, me, I, I don't do empathy. Um, through some of my past uh, trauma that you're talking about with my mother committing suicide and a few of my friends going through suicide. I don't do empathy very well. I kind of had to pick myself up and, and get myself moving and get myself out of the hole. So empathy is not something I do well. I don't know how to like when my daughters cry and they get hurt, I just pick them up. I'm like, you're fine. You know what's going on. You're not bleeding. It's okay. Like, Shut off the waterworks. You're fine. I don't. I don't do that level of empathy. Um, but Ross does. So for Cheryl, I can meet a lot of her boxes. But Ross is the final piece that gives her her full fulfillment. Yeah. That's so she can get everything she needs to coexist. In the end, I would say if, like you said, you don't check all the boxes for her. And not everyone is going to check all the boxes. It's for physically you. impossible for one person to do so, it. Yeah, exactly. So what happens though in, in a lot of cases is people cheat. No, absolutely. You know? So at least you know who she's with, right? And no, you know and, everything and about him. You know, you're you're 100 spot on. No and sneaking around. None of I that know bullshit. he's safe. I know he's taking the precautions he needs to take to keep her safe and taken care of, and not only physically but emotionally and sexually safe. Like. These are all big things because, yes, that's where cheating comes from is, to be blunt, like, I'm dating this girl. She doesn't give me head. I want head. Right. I'm going to go get it. Absolutely. So instead of going to some random event or hooking up with some random person and potentially opening yourself up to, you know, infidelity, divorce, just, you know, all that crap, we go, hey, I, I want to go get a blowjob. And they're going to be like, okay, you know, make sure they're safe, take yada, 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 yada. But now we, we don't have to worry about that. Ross is that person for her. And uh, funny enough, being being out in Vegas, keeping her safe, Cheryl has a fun tendency of getting drunk and wandering. And <laughs> she just will wander the fuck off. So we have location on her and we'll have to send out search party. Cause she's like, oh, I'm going to go potty. And then like takes the longest way possible to find a bathroom and, there and back <laughs> and we drank a lot on Fremont and if you've ever been to Vegas you don't really wander around outside of Fremont Fremont itself is very safe heavy police forces lots of lights lots of cameras backside of Fremont not the safest place for a girl to be walking around at oh, three in the morning yeah. um, but that's one of the jokes and she'll probably be pissed off I said this because one time she was on the phone with me and she just wandered the fuck off she's like but I'm on the phone with you and I'm like shithead I'm three and a half hours away in another state. Right. <laughs> I can't be like, hey, guys, you know, no, don't mess with her. Don't worry. I can't do that over the, the phone. phone. Yeah. Put yeah. me on speaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. put That's me on speaker. Let me talk to these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let me like, FaceTime these <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, So, But uh, he, he's good at that. He's – you you know, Cheryl, She she's 100% Navajo, Uh and the native blood is very strong. I don't know if you guys know native people or have friends that have native blood in them. They are very headstrong and very uh, independent, uh, dominating people. And Ross is one of the few people that I've actually seen her just melt. And uh, that that's actually, I have pictures on my phone. Um, but just to see her just turn into putty with somebody else and it, it brings me a level of joy i can't that's fucking awesome. can't describe because 
to see her completely and totally happy makes me happy. Right. And oh, yeah. Cheryl, she uh, she does CrossFit. Uh, she, I think her last deadlift was 180 pounds. She is not a little girl by any means. She has literally thrown my ass around the house in arguments, and, and I can 100% say that she has thrown me the fuck around. But to see this big, strong independent woman just turned to putty with somebody else knowing that she is safe and happy and being taken care of just fills a part of me that I didn't know could be filled. Yeah, that's so that's right. crazy. So that, that's like, I guess the biggest form of love in an odd way, because you're realizing that the stuff that she's missing, you can't fulfill for her. Yeah. But you're allowing her to get that fulfillment somewhere else. And that's, that, one of the things I'm doing with Savannah right now is I know I can't fix all of her boxes. So I am constantly telling her like, Hey, reach out. If you're somebody you want to talk to, she's trying to rebuild friendships with a handful of people right now. And I'm constantly pushing her to do that because I know I'm not able to meet all of her needs. And I know one of these individuals, if not all of them can help fulfill those needs. So I'm constantly pushing her. Hey, have you talked to so-and-so? Have you talked to so-and-so? When are you guys going out again? When are you guys going to go get lunch? Because I, I want her to have the total fulfillment. I want her to be complete and happy and have everything she needs. I don't want to hold her back or restrain her from anything. Man, I love that. That's just awesome shit. I mean, I think anybody can learn a lot from you just, Period. Just as far as relationship stuff goes, you know, patience, you know, trust, communication, all those things, you know, just being in the type of relationship you're in. I mean, I think that's kudos to you, brother. That's awesome, dude, that you're actually Absolutely. living that yeah, life. Not just that. Colin, <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys know Colin. Colin has been through some shit, okay? He has had a very full life. He's seen a lot of things. He yeah. has done it all. So even just Colin, if you don't know Colin or if you see him, He's very nice. He's very friendly. If you want to say hey, yeah. ask him any questions, I'm sure. Be respectful. Yeah, don't be don't a dirtbag. Don't, don't, don't just come be up like, oh, be hey, a... don't hit him like that. But <laughs> just talk, have a conversation. Say, Colin's hey, very respectful. You? He's very yeah. well-spoken. He's always carried himself as a gentleman. I, I try. I mean, I have my uh, – we all have our moments. Um, no one's perfect. I, uh, I came from a pretty rough past. Um, Definitely did my fair share of things, spent my fair share in time incarcerated, all that other jazz. But uh, it, it's all learning. It's all stepping stones. You, you can't let today's failure prevent you from becoming tomorrow's success. And polyamory is just like that. Like, you're going to fuck up. You're going to fail. You, the worst part is, is when you do fail, you don't hear it once. You hear it twice, if not three times. But, you know, you just, you got to... Get up and keep moving forward and just be honest with yourself and your emotions and your feelings because at the end of the day, that is all that matters. So I think... Absolutely. I think, Colin, that you've got me sold. <laughs> Polly Amory is for me. Sure. Me, a six-pack of unicorns. I will text him all day. Shit, you got the boat for it, man. <laughs> you got the boat for it. That's no, I, I, I'm going to have to go. He's got those Twitter fingers. You want to text? I'm going to have to go with snacks no. on this. I mean, I'd be down to be the Sancho. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me, I mean, you know what I mean? That Where sounds you got cool. space for it. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, yeah, but jo no commitment. No commitment. That, that's no, why. I got no kids. I got, I'm not you know, married. I mean, I'd be, that's interesting. If, be, if you look at today's. I'd be super down for that today's youth and dating that's where they're at you don't see people getting married anymore because mm -hmm. no one wants the commitment no one wants the title i mean hell you get on fucking uh tinder or bumble or whatever dating app you can literally select something casual because 90 percent of people don't want the commitment anymore they don't want the bullshit they don't want the emotional baggage that comes with it, and there's nothing wrong. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. 90% of the people, lucky me, I get the rough. Lucky me, I get the 10% that want commitment. Cool. Well, people <laughs> say, it's easy to say. They're like, oh, I don't want it's casual. Looking for casual. Till it's casual, and then they're like, what is this fucking casual stuff? I don't want this. I want that 90% that doesn't want commitment. It's, no. not, <laughs> it's not that simple. No, it's not. It it's never is, but I mean... People are very indecisive. They don't, you don't know if you want the cake pie until somebody sits down with an apple pie next to you and then you go, well, shit, I should have got that. And that's the problem with today's society is that instant gratification where 
you didn't say I was attracted today. I'm going to post a half naked selfie on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of the sex, and you can get thousands of comments, thousands of likes, and now you don't give a shit about your partner. You have all your self inflation and all of your ego needs at a click. Online validation. Yeah, it, absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah, and it, I mean, uh, and that leads to why there's uh, such a high divorce rate. You know what no, I mean? It, you were, it, you were it already does. touching on that. Everyone's accessible. It, you know? it, it, it's just too easy. So being in the mini truck club and back before cell phones and social media, we used to, if you search hard enough, there's a picture of me standing on top of a squad car in La Paz County with two other guys stark ass naked because that's, we would just get drunk and run around. Girls would run around, throw bras, panties. It was the thing. Like I, Girls gone wild the whole nine yards. And then social media came and cell phones came and all that. And it now people have to be cautious of, well, if I post this, will it cost me a job later? Or if I say this, will it cost me a job later? It's the same thing. Now, instead of being in a committed relationship, you can just get the next thing instead of dealing with all the bullshit. And, you know, it's the same both sides of the coin of social media has been the death of a lot, a lot of things where you guys can't speak as freely as you'd like to because if you say one thing wrong, it's on the internet and you could be slandered for forever. Just like, you know, if you one of your pictures gets leaked, Caitlin, like it would be almost impossible to get it back once it's out. Why is it gotta be me? <laughs> because 90% of men don't care if their nudes get leaked. <laughs> right. Shout out Drake. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's just part of the statistics. Like, but that, that is modern social media. That is X, that is Riddick, that is TikTok, that is uh, Trends, the new thing that Instagram meta put out. You know, it, it's just the instant validation and the next thing is just a click away. And that, that gets into Sancho's and Sancha's and wanting just to be a dedicated side piece without fucking responsibility. Yeah, it's Where, a whole, whole can of worms. I know well, I think Amory does give you the responsibility, <laughs> but you don't have to bring everything to the table. You just have to be at the table. I think Josh and I are always on the same page. I think I can speak for Josh on this. I'm not against being committed to someone. I just don't think I found that person that I want to commit to. And That's the hard part. Yeah, because, well, and here's another thing. Myself. Th this is another thing. Uh, if you talk to a woman and you tell them, I'm not looking for anything or I'm not going to commit right now, then they don't want to give you the time of day or they don't want to speak to you because you're not looking for something. But how do you know that we start hanging out and then that evolves into something else? No, absolutely. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's exactly take, how take I... Take my time, right, Snacks? I mean, yeah, we just had this conversation we were, we earlier. We just had a conversation on this. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I don't look to be single, you know what I mean? But I am single and it's going to take somebody to, uh, you know, get me into that commitment. You know, but that doesn't mean don't try, yeah. you know what I mean? Or don't not want to hang out with me or, oh, he's single. Yeah. He hangs out with too many girls, whatever, whatever the case is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've heard it's that. Like, I've heard that. Take my time. Two or three times yeah. in like yeah. the past two Come weeks about me. me that girls you don't want to talk to me because I'm always surrounded around other girls. by people already. Yeah. Because I always have pretty girls around me. Who doesn't want to be surrounded by pretty girls? No, no shit. Pretty yeah. girls want to be surrounded by pretty girls. Yeah. Right. I like yeah. pretty don't, girls. I, I like girls you know that I mean? like girls. Yeah. Um, but. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a legitimate saying. Yeah, I like absolutely. girls, I like girls. But for me, that's actually how I started dating Savannah is we were friends first. She was actually my ex-girlfriend's friend. And we developed a friendship prior. Um, and she helped me cope through the outcome of my relationship. Uh, I don't want to get into specifics because it doesn't need to be put out there. But uh, some things transpired that shouldn't have so we separated ways and savannah actually helped me kind of cope through it and was there for me as a friend and we remained friends for a while and then i actually asked her out on a date to just see how it was and we went very slow so i get the take my time aspect because of everybody else i had dated in the past wanting the instant commitment or wanting something that i wasn't ready to give yet because it's not like i can give you the world. I can't give you the white picket fence and, and any of that other stuff. So I needed someone that said, you know, take my time because that's all I had. And uh, so I get that. I, I fully, fully do. And I think that's the most important aspect of any relationship is if you don't have a level of friendship, 
how the hell are you going to be intimate romantic partners? Yep, absolutely. I tell my boyfriend and I tell each other all the time, you are my best friend. That is like our version of I love you or whatever yeah, you want to no, say. That's important. You, he is my best friend and he is my favorite person on this earth and and that's a huge part of it. It's it's huge to me personally and it sounds like it is to you too. Yeah, no, 1000%. That's why I'm still with Cheryl. That's why I will always come back to her through all of our infidelities and all of our cheatings and all of our bullshit. We always gravitated back to each other. We always did. We always found a way to uh, to just work it out and come back to an accord and make it work. And why the fuck would I give up on that? The yeah. one person that's had my back for half my life, that, that's literally had my back more than my own yeah. blood has. Yep. Uh, I'm not giving up on that no matter what happens and uh because i've had girls like well if you're dating other people what's the point what's the point is that's my best fucking friend yep. <laughs> like that's my best friend and we click on multiple levels i'm not giving that up but i know that i can't fulfill her checklist and she can't fulfill mine so here we are this is what i have they offer if you don't like it there's the fucking door yeah, yeah. I'm not requiring you to stay. I'm not begging you to stay. I am asking you to give me your time so we can see if our pieces mesh. Because yeah. when you build a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, pieces do click that don't go there. You don't yeah. know until you get X amount in. Oh, shit, that's the wrong corner piece. That goes over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, shit, it didn't work. All right, let's start over. So for you, I, I fully get that. I get you wanting somebody but not being able to find your cup of tea yet. Yeah. But all I can say is stop looking. You're going to find the person that means the most to you when you aren't looking for it. It's like looking for your lost keys. As soon as you say, fuck it, and you just leave, you find your shit. Yep, or anything. Yeah. I'll, 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 mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I, I give up. I'll find it when I find so it. So yeah, exactly. I'm not saying Speaking close the book and put it on the damn shelf, but right. you know, keep the apps and scroll on it periodically, but don't, don't fixate. Yeah. Because... My favorite saying, if you have to force it, it's probably shit. Yep. And, and that, that's in all reality. If you have to force communication with somebody, if you have to force that fake laugh or that fake smile or that any fake emotion to be around somebody, you're wasting your time, you're wasting their time. What's the fucking point? Absolutely. That's very insightful, Colin. And that's it speaks volumes to who you as a person and uh, your relationships and everything. I think that's... I think that's really cool, and thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you so much for coming in, that's Colin. Awesome. Really appreciate you. Thank you for sharing all that with us. That's awesome, and all of our viewers. A lot of awesome <laughs> insight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I, I know fun. I rambled a little bit, but uh, no, it was. Oh, yeah, it was no. Good. It was if you guys insightful. see me out in public, please feel free to talk to me. You know, be respectful. Buy me a drink, or yeah. tell me I'm pretty, <laughs> or something. Buy the guy a damn pretty. drink. Yeah, you know. But my favorite is like, so I heard your lady single, and I'm like. At the fuck am I supposed to respond to that? Yeah, like, I really guys go to the bar like, hey, is your old lady, like, can I take her home and fuck her? And I'm like, how am I supposed to respond to them? Like, yeah. The fuck kind of question Yo, yeah, was that? Yeah, if I can yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hit, like, if I, never mind. Yeah. I said it wrong. Seen that? Yeah. I messed up on, my own joke. On that note, thanks for watching, guys. We truly Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you again, Colin. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.